All right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I thought I'd give you a quick garage tour. Um, I was on my way to the shops for a few essential bits, which happens to be like three doors down that way. So I thought I'd swing by the garage, pick up the mail, check everything was all right. And yeah, I thought I may as well bring my camera along and give you a quick tour. A few of you have asked me to do a garage tour in the past, but I've been a little bit reluctant because, well, it's a little bit scruffy. There's nothing wrong with it, don't get me wrong, but it's nothing really to, to, to show off. The showroom that I'm sat in now is a little bit run down and probably made entirely from asbestos. It also leaks quite a bit when it rains, and this being the northwest of England, that happens quite a lot. It used to be a fuel station, but for the last 25 years or so it's been a used car garage. So although I like it, I didn't think there was anything to, to show off particularly. Anyway, I'll give you a bit of a tour. I've been based here for about three years. Before this, I was on an industrial estate in the middle of nowhere. So now I actually share this garage with my colleague. So he has his company, I have mine, and we just share the premises. Which works out really well because when he's on holiday, I can run his business. And when I am, he runs mine. So it just works really well. So this is the main showroom. That's the Lexus IS300 I filmed with a few weeks ago. It holds six or seven cars at a push. Although, like I say, it was built, I think, in the 1950s when cars were a lot smaller. So there's not an awful lot of room. There's the Discovery Sport I filmed with. There's my beautiful overpriced M3. Let me show you this, actually, because I'm a little bit gutted about this. But the front wing, bear in mind I've had the whole thing resprayed. The front wing has got a tiny rust bubble on it. Now the paint shop did warn me that this might happen, but I just thought I'd get a couple of years out of it before it started. Anyway, the only way around that is to um, is to replace the, the front wing with a brand new one, which is going to cost me about a thousand pounds, so that's a job for next year, or not next year, when we reopen. That's the 996 Turbo that I filmed with a few months ago. Oh, there's the M5. I've not been in there now for like a couple of weeks and I've forgotten what I've got. There's the Disco Sport. One more little job that I've got to do on the M3, which I've noticed, is I think it's got a flat battery now, so I need to be careful. Yes, flat battery. The driver's seat, if you can just see there, the stitching has come away. So I need to get that down to auto trim or somewhere once we reopen and get that repaired. But I think I'm just going to keep the M3 because I love it that much. And to be honest, at that price, it's overpriced. So I've had no interest in it, but I just love it. And I was looking forward to this year going on a few road trips with it. So hopefully that, that will still happen. On the front there, I don't know if you can see through the roller shutter, I've got a couple of cheap cars. Because before we before we locked down, I bought a few cheap cars that I wouldn't normally stock. I just thought that would be a wise thing to do because if we do go into recession, those kinds of cars are just recession proof. So yeah, here's my little office area. That's a little bit untidy, I have to admit. Spare wheels for something, I'm not sure. That needs to go to the tip, but everywhere's closed. That's the storeroom where we just hoard old rubbish. It's like a purgatory for crap. Here's the kitchen where we drill number plates. It's had like 25 years of abuse, I think. I think one day when I'm drilling some number plates, it will eventually just collapse. So yeah, that's the showroom. So out there you can see the forecourt. It holds about 40 cars, so it's quite a good size. We have about 20 each. Although at the moment I'm absolutely brimming with stock. I've got about 45 myself. So they're just parked in every every free car park in the area. They're being abused at the moment by me. So we're right on the main road in a fairly small little village. So there's plenty of passing trade. Let me go and show you the forecourt. So that's the forecourt. What have we got at the moment? BMW 320 diesel, a Citroen Berlingo, Jeep Grand Cherokee. 
this guy. Volvo XC90, that's nice. I was going to film with that, but I've not had a chance. My short wheelbase Shogun. This Shogun, by the way, just for all those people who say Japanese cars are the most reliable cars on the planet, this particular Shogun has cost me about three and a half thousand pounds in repairs. When I bought it, it was a little bit slow. So I took it to my mechanic and they suggested replacing the EGR valve. So I did that, that was about 400 pounds. And it was still no better. So then I replaced the four injectors. That cost a thousand pounds. And that, I thought, had cured it. It was fine. It drove really well, it pulled like a train. But when you were idling, if you revved it to two and a half thousand revs, it was almost like, well, it wasn't getting any fuel. The whole thing would shake violently and smoke. It was, it was horrendous. So it turned out it needed a new fuel pump. So I called Mitsubishi to get a price and it was 5,000 pounds plus VAT for a new fuel pump. In the end, I found a company online who refurbished the old one for 1,295 pounds plus labor because it was buried. So this car's for sale for four and a half thousand pounds. It owes me in excess of six. So yeah. Not good business, is it? That was another car, by the way, that was traded in by a member of the public without explaining all its faults. There are a couple of little cheap ones on the front there. Peugeot 107, VW Fox, and a Ford Fiesta. What else? We've got a bright orange Mini. Alfa Romeo Giulietta, Seat Leon. That's a nice car, actually. I know it's basically a Golf, but BMW Z4 3 litre there. Fiat Punto, Rio, Yeti. See what I mean about having too much stock? I can barely walk past them. See, it's not a bad size, is it? That's quite a nice car actually, the Insignia, I was going to film with this. I know they're a little bit boring, but that one's quite a nice spec and I quite like the dark green colour. A little Audi A1, Jaguar XF. That's a nice one actually, it's only done 59,000 miles. Murano that some of you loved and some of you hated. Well that's pretty much it. I just thought I'd give you a quick tour of the showroom in the garage and show you all where I worked uh, and show you what sort of cars we've got in at the moment. If you enjoyed the video make sure you give it a thumbs up, make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already, follow me on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I'll leave the link below somewhere. Yeah if you've got any questions or comments let me know and I'll do my best to get back to you. So cheers guys, take care, see you soon.